Good morning, campers, and welcome to Triggered, coming to you from, of course, the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains, Dragon House Studio, where all the windows are open, showing a spectacular snow-covered view. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Michael Bain, and we're continuing our coverage of Shock 2020 in Las Vegas. And today we're going to talk about some of the rim fires there that I found especially interesting, the 22s. But before we go to the SHOT Show floor, I wanted to show you this guy. It is an upper for Ruger Mark IV from Mad Max Tactical, or Precision Tactical. It's a long thing. Cut it down. It's either precision or it's tactical. Anyway, Mad Max Precision Tactical. I've actually bought parts from them over the last couple of years, uh, essentially mounts for sights, compensators. I've been impressed with their work. And recently they decided to expand out into providing their own uppers, which they call their X-Bar uppers. And you can actually get them as a complete gun as well as an upper. You're pretty familiar with how this works. This is a tactical solution pack light upper. And as we know, with the Ruger, with the Mark series, the upper is what carries the serial number. This is the gun part of the gun. And this is one of my go-to six inch tactical solutions. You see this outer impact red dot mount sight here. Again, I screw my red dot in here. This is what I use. What attracted me to the Mad Mac version is See how they inlet this sight. So the top here, there's no rear sight on this gun. Instead, it's machined as, as deeply as you can and then using one of their, their mounts to carry, this is a Trijicon SRO, of course, but I like it because it brings the red dot down closer to the line of the bore, which is important to me. How close, um, on my calipers, I was looking at almost a quarter of an inch lower than with the outer impact match, which is a lower mount than if I'd used a Picatinny rail. So I'm looking forward to shooting this. By the way, this is their own compensator. I like that their compensator has a couple of set screws. You screw it in, you tighten them down. It doesn't fall off in a match. I see that as a big plus. But since we already started talking about tactical solutions, let's jump to the SHOT Show and my good friend Chet Alvord, who is in the process of disassembling and reassembling Tactical Solutions' newest product, which is a takedown bolt-action rifle. It's named uh, Owyhee, O-W-Y-H-E-E. -E. Come on, Chet, couldn't you have named it Alice or Bob or something like that? Owyhee, but what's, what's interesting here is it's a bolt-action rifle that's very, very similar to a Ruger 1022, uh, the 1022s, or the X-Rings that Tactical Solutions has made for quite a while. It's a takedown version. It is the only takedown bolt-action rifle that's available right now, only rimfire takedown bolt-action rifle. And as you can see watching the video, it, it is a very small package once it's, you ratchet off the front just like you would with any other uh, Ruger or Tactical Solutions or, or Volkwartz and takedown gun. Put it together, you've got that, that Magpul backpacker stock, and you end up with a very light package. I think it's 3.7, 3.9 pounds, somewhere right in there. So you have a gun now that's ideal to take into the field. If, if you're a backpacker, um, it's a handy thing to have in your backpack. Uh, if you're a prepper, this is kind of an ideal gun to have. Uh, What's the advantage over, over a semi-auto, obviously an X-Ring, a 1022? A bolt gun will fire what you can get in it, and that does make a difference. So a lot of times what we see with, with a semi-auto, especially a 22, semi-auto 22s are finicky, and all of us who compete with them, who hunt with them, who train with them, have spent time sorting through ammo to find the one that the gun likes the best. You don't have that issue with a bolt-action rifle it's gonna feed pretty much what you've got in it. And that means, let's say you're a backpacker, and let's say you, know, you, you might wanna do a little small game hunting, you're in season, and you've got this in your, your backpack, you can load it with something like CCI Quiet or the Gemtech Subsonics. There's a couple of other of them out there. And so even without a suppressor, it is a very quiet gun. With a suppressor, obviously it's set up with a threaded barrel as almost all 22s are these days. So you can thread on a 22 suppressor and with a bolt gun, keep in mind that, that the sound of a semi-auto, part of what you're still hearing is the action cycling. 
bolt comes back, bolt goes forward, right? So with a bolt gun, none of that happens. You close the bolt, pull the trigger, bang. And on a suppress, with a suppressor, you hear virtually nothing. I think most of you know that I've spent time training for hunting using a Ruger American, which again, a 22 bolt action that also feeds from the 1022 magazines. And at various times of the year when I'm shooting it at dusk or almost in the dark, I'll run a suppressor, it's dead quiet. And so that's a real advantage to it. Uh, I, I think it's a neat gun. I think it's, it's gonna fill a niche there. And I, and I think, I haven't shot it yet. You know, I, I still, uh, uh, this re the website listed is back ordered, which means it, it may not be out in the wild yet. I'm interested in seeing what kind of accuracy you can get off of it because one of the things that um, we've seen with Tactical Solutions is recently they brought out a match grade barrel because long range competition is really taking off. So that if you combine the match grade barrel with the, the, uh, the bolt action gun, you may have something there. I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to, to shooting it. Uh, also spent some time with my friends at Caltech. I actually was at the booth signing, which I love signing at booths, it was really fun. But I put, put more rounds to the, the Caltech uh, CP33, which stands for Competition Pistol 33. It is, a, it is that quad stack 22. So there are actually four rows of 22s in this magazine, 33 rounds, and then they come together and it feeds up one at a time. It is designed to be a competition pistol, and yet it's ugly, uh, with the long like part of the, part of, uh, the uh, uh, action coming back over your hand like a bore short or some old gun. But as you can see here, running it with a suppressor, it, it is a super soft shooting gun. Um, and that, that impresses me a lot. In fact, I am working with one of our sponsors, Tandem Cross and Caltech, to build a competition version of the CP33. Also, spent some time with the P17, which is Caltech's newest 22. A 16 plus one, uh, tiniest, weighs like, uh, I don't know, about half a pound, a little bit more than that. Uh, compact and has an MSRP of $199. That's not even the street price. So when Triggered returns, we're gonna talk a little bit more about 22s. This week's Triggered is brought to you by Tandem Cross, making good 22s even better. Lucid Optics, on target, under budget. Franklin Armory, some of the most innovative firearms in America. Cimarron, King of the Cowboys, and of course, Lipsy's and their great gun of the month. Welcome back to Triggered, where we are talking about 22s that we saw at SHOT 2020. One interesting thing that struck me is, I've told you before how much 20, uh, 22 competition has really taken off and has become a major driver in the field. And of course, I'm so proud of the Rimfire Challenge Shooting Association where I sit on the board. Uh, we got a spectacular world match in October. We're going back to Arkansas, Fort Smith, Arkansas for that in 2020. And I noticed that a lot of companies who had kind of held back a little are now seriously in the game, seriously building competition guns. For example, TC, Thompson Center, uh, coming out of the Performance Center there at Smith & Wesson, they're part of that family. They're building some great competition guns. Magnum Research, who were initially a little bit afraid to like tiptoe into that competition market, well now they're in it 100%. They've got shooters working for them, they've got their own team, and those guys are tearing it up. See that with Winchester and uh, their 1022 magazine compatible gun that we shot at the, uh, the OSG Roundtable last year. So you're seeing a lot more people coming into this game. I think it's great. Um, so we want to go from the newest people back to the oldest people, right? Uh, Volk Hortzen has been in 22s for a long time. Uh, they've cut their teeth on the old sportsman's team challenge, which was the Chevy team challenge. But Scott Volk Hortzen never sit still. Of course, he took over the business from his father. So it's his second generation Vol Quartzen. Scott pretty quickly went into Rimfire Challenge Shooting Association and Steel Challenge Speed, Rimfire Speed, and started building guns for that. And now, now, Scott's looking at 22 Precision because that's a place where he also wants to go. One of the things that interested me, spending time with Vol Quartzen, 
is they've moved a lot away from accessories. You know, you can you can buy a top or you can buy a frame or anything like that. But the direction they seem to be going in is you can buy a complete Volkortsen gun. Now they're handguns, of course, the Scorpion and the Black Mamba. They have uh, dozens of different variations of those guns, whether it's on a, a Mark III, Mark IV Ruger chassis or a 2245. But you can buy the entire competition gun now from Volkortsen. And I will say that at the Rimfire Challenge World, Challenge World Championships last year, I saw a lot of complete Volkortsen guns out there. So I think he's hit a sweet spot. Guns are about, I don't know, 1200 bucks, which once again, when we start talking about competition stuff, $1,200 is nothing compared to a USPSA open race gun. It's not even the optic and the, and the, and the, the mount, but Volkortsen, a proven quantity, those guns are superb, superbly accurate. Uh, one of the things I did want to talk to you about just a little bit with Volkortsen is their Summit straight pull bolt gun. Now, the gun was originally developed by, I believe, primary weapon systems. And, and so what they did is they designed it similar to some guns you see in Europe. Um, I've shot straight pull centerfire rifles. What they are is bolt guns that don't ratchet up. A straight pull rifle is exactly what it says it is, chunk chunk. I've shot biathlon guns, by the way, 22 biathlon guns that, that were also straight pull. It's very, very fast because think about, think about the movement with the bolt action. You know, you, the bolts close down, bang, you come up, you come back, you go forward, you go down. So there's like four separate movements involved there. Now with the straight pull, what's gonna happen is you're just gonna pull straight on that handle, the bolt handle. You're gonna pull straight back, push straight forward. It's so easy to do it, you do it, you bang, bang, you can literally pull with your trigger finger, push back with your thumb, your hand then is ready to reaccess the trigger again. It is a very fast way to run a bolt gun. So, uh, primary weapon system came out with this this uh, uh, 22 setup, and it, it didn't go anywhere. It's expensive, and it was it was in a sense ahead of its time. 22 competition hadn't taken off to the point that it has now. So uh, Scott and the team at Volkortsen said, "Well, we'll take it and we'll do refinements with it. We'll work with it. We'll refine it down." And so now the summits become a, an important inclusion in the Volkorts in line. Uh, interesting one, enough, once again, Volkorts and lets you, you know, same as with Taxol, but they'll let you build your own gun however you want it. The standard Summit rifle, and, and again, we're looking at about a $1,200 piece, you know, somewhere between $1,100 and $1,400. Uh, it's going to come with one of Volkorts carbon fiber wrapped barrels. Uh, carbon fiber is, is uh, probably the future if you will. So uh, a typical, in a, in a case like this where you've got a stainless steel barrel that's encased in this aluminum sleeve that becomes the upper, with a carbon fiber barrel, what you have is once again the steel barrel, stainless steel barrel, wrapped with carbon fiber. And why is that an advantage? Well, carbon fiber dampens recoil. And so you know any gun that's fired, there it, with uh, the recoil and the vibration in the barrel, Carbon fiber damps that. And so carbon fiber is the choice among long distance shooters. And the, the Volkortsen carbon fiber barrel is, is something to behold. So with the Summit, quick ratchet, you've got the, the Volkortsen um, target barrel. They're ultra, and it's very, very light. The carbon fiber barrels are really, really light. Uh, it also comes with the Volkortsen trigger groups. You, you know I've used Volkortsen trigger groups on my competition, my speed competition guns for, I don't know, a, a decade? Those, the, the, the Volkorts and trigger groups to me at about three pounds, maybe a little less, maybe a little more depending on the group, is perfect for speed competition. And, and Volkorts and can take that weight down should they choose to. So with the Summit, you have a really interesting gun. You can use it in Rimfire Challenge Mechanical Division, which I've shot bolt guns in, in a Rimfire Challenge match. It's really fun. Or, or you can look at that as the basis for a precision long-range rifle. Volkortsen will sell you a barreled action, and it, it fits a, a 1022 platform. So you can look at some of these new long-range 22s 
They're, they're stocks designed for long range, adjustable stocks. Or you can look at Volkortsen, who has the, their Inferno stock, which is 100% adjustable on all points, and build up maybe a long range competition gun. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's, it's interesting to see something that could be a crossover gun. So uh, one of these days I'll pick one up. I, I do like it. I've shot them and I, I think they're super guns. So anyway, that's just a quick look at what we saw at the SHOT Show in 22s. I have another 22. It's the Ruger 22 LCP2. But I want to do a lot more emphasis on that. I want to put some rounds down through it. I want to show you some differences with the LP, uh, LCP SPAT platform and the 22 version of it. So, I am Michael Bain. You can find us on michaelbain.tv. This is Triggered and we will see you next week.